One second, guys. I'm trying to play with my bop it. Okay, bop it. <gasps> okay, sorry, bop it. Let's just try again. Bop it? Why are you looking at me like that, Bop It? I don't like the way you're looking at me, Bop It. Why are you shaking, Bop It? What's going on? What's going on, Bop It? Bop It! Bop It! Bop It! Bop It! Bop It! Guys, that Bop It literally just tried to... Me! You know, like... You know, like... Make me a goner! Like... Dead! I thought that thing was fun, but it's just evil. So today, we're going to be looking at other toys that are also not as good as you thought they were. Some toys so dangerous that they might even kill you. But before we start, I need you all to smash that like button right now. But I only want you to hit the like button if you don't want your favorite toy to go evil on you too. I'm just saying. Three. Kids. Kids doll involved a motorized mouth mechanism that allowed the doll to eat plastic foods. Kids being hmm. kids, it didn't take much for fingers and hair to get trapped in those evil dolls' unforgiving maws. <laughs> okay, so these Cabbage Patch Kids are caught guilty of being a little hungry. I mean, can you blame them? While such a doll wasn't exactly life-threatening, parents unsurprisingly did not like their kids' new favorite pals pulling their hair out by the roots. Oh. The most charming aspect of these terrifying eating machines was that they were made without any on-off switch. In at least one instance, this led to a girl virtually being scalped all along the backside of her head. So basically what they're saying is that they'll just eat and eat and eat and eat and never get full. That's kind of spooky. They don't even come with an off switch. Imagine you're just sleeping at night. You got the doll on your countertop or so you thought then you wake up in the middle of the night and bam the doll is right by your head about to eat off one of your fingers or something that's taking hangry to a new level Cell may not have identified any obvious hazard in their tests but thankfully that didn't stop them from pulling the dolls from store shelves mm -hmm. In the 1950s, all of America was excited to see the economy-changing prospect of nuclear power and splitting the atom. With the introduction of the Gilbert U-238 Atomic Energy Lab, children everywhere were encouraged to get involved and be inspired by science. Created by Alfred Carlton Gilbert, the science kit for children included ore samples with uranium, a known source of radiation poisoning. Well I'm sorry, I know they didn't just say radiation and poison in the same sentence for a toy made for kids. No wonder this thing was banned. This is one science experiment that is definitely going to be labeled as deadly. Well, it's been concluded that short-term exposure to the types of radiation in the kid wouldn't have caused an immediate health detriment. Mm, Any I don't kind think of consumption so. by these children would have been cancer-inducing. A clear danger to children, and these kids still took a few years to be pulled off the market. What? Cancer-inducing? Took a few years to get off the shelf? It's like, bro, what other kind of proof do you need? Radiation! Poison! Cancer-inducing! Then you got Tommy the Toy Inspector over there like, Hmm, yeah, mm, I don't know if I see any issues with this. I mean, kids are smart. They'll be fine. Leave it on the shelves. They're good. Uh, I don't think so. Mr. Toy Inspector, you need to be fired and sent off to space with that kind of attitude. Gosh! Spring loaded doesn't really have a kid friendly connotation. Ooh, I but remember snack these. Bracelets are metal springy bands wrapped in colorful plastic and fabric to entice small children, designed to straighten out rigid when unfurled and curl up quickly when smacked against a wrist or surface. The toy quickly popularized in the 1990s with school children. I remember these like they were night and day. All the cool kids had multiple ones on their wrists, all different colors and stuff. But then you also kept a couple in your pocket that weren't supposed to go on your wrist. Mm, mm, mm. They're meant to be slapping your enemies with at recess. Couple suddenly tap tapped with those bracelets and your wrist be looking redder than your mama's pasta sauce on a Sunday night. Ugh. I speak from experience. 
Unfortunately, like many toy fads, generic manufacturers got a hold of the snap bracelets and began cutting costs by using cheap fabric that sharp metal edges would Ooh. slice through into small tender wrists nationwide. Hold up, but I remember something slicing through my wrist without those metal pieces. Those things hurt either way, man. The knockoffs were quickly called into investigation and recalled by manufacturers who were selling them to children for under a dollar. Someone in the 80s had an awesome idea to take a drunken adult bar game and put a twist on it by marketing Aww. it as child fun. Add heavy, solid, sharp metal, impaired forethought, and children, and you get the jar disaster of 1988. Tommy Toy Inspector, get back in here! You're telling me that you let this one slide too? Piercing metal darts? Young children throwing them? Probably at other young children's eyes? Amazing idea! Really? B plus! Man, these toy companies be getting more savage and more savage by the year! And you get the Jart disaster of 1988, wherein the Consumer Product and Safety Commission banned Jarts on December 19th hope so. for causing an estimated 762 emergency room visits every year, with 80% being minors. Adult supervision or not, Jarts were responsible for over 7,000 injuries and even a few oh! deaths. 7,000 injuries and a couple! Oh, I mean, I knew it would be dangerous, but I didn't think it would be that dangerous! Tommy's definitely getting fired now! As he should! The release of Ew. Creepy Crawlers in 1964 came with high-temperature melted plastic and an electrically powered mold that heats to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh! Oh, plastic being heated up at super high temperatures? How could that be dangerous? 149 degrees Celsius. This was an extremely popular Ugh. toy for children, wherein kids get to make and design their own gummy <laughs> toys in the shape of creepy bugs and spiders. While the creative aspect was intriguing, sizzling hot burns and toxic fumes caused the downfall of this popular toy. Toxic fumes! See guys, I told you! Dangerous! Also, how did I know that a toy of creepy, crawly, disgusting bugs would be a hit with kids? Why y'all gotta be so nasty like that and like the grossest things imaginable? I'm just asking! Magnets I remember are these. A fascinating toy for I love this. They provide endless amusement using the natural forces mm. of the universe. In 2004, Megablox released Ooh. Magnetics, a plastic building toy with tiny magnetic pieces inside. Tragically, the magnets could be easily dislodged from the toy pieces and were quickly swallowed by curious toddlers oh. and babies. Mommy, I wanna be pretty. Sweetie, you are pretty. You got beautiful blonde hair, blue eyes, perfect skin. No, I won't be pretty on the inside. I'm gonna swallow. Wasteland. Mm, beautiful. These magnets cause several health complications Ooh. when they would naturally attract in the body and pull on organs. Oh. In 2006, Magnetics was recalled, but not before 30 kids were injured. And tragically, in 2005, a 22 month old named Kenny Sweet died from digesting no, the toy. Oh, Kenny! Oh! Why are these toys gotta be so sketchy like this? I mean, guys, if you didn't already know this, you should not be eating plastic pieces of any kind. You should be eating nothing that's not food given to you by your mom or your dad or whoever takes care of you if it ain't food it ain't fun toy guns are a hot topic oh my gosh because of concern of this is a you know like a you know but for kids what could go wrong because of concern about the future mental detriment they yeah. may cause. In the 1940s, the Austin Magic Pistol was released. It used an explosive reaction with calcium carbide and water to propel ping pong balls out of the muzzle at breakneck <gasps> speeds. The manufacturers quickly learned of the real world violence that could be committed with this dangerous toy and quickly removed it from the market. I'm sorry, did they just call it a magic pistol? Ain't nothing magic about hurting someone, sis. And somebody has to tell me if that fire coming from it is real or fake. These toy companies really be trying to bring their toys from one level to the next. They're like, hmm, toy pistol for kids? Nah, not good enough. Let's do flamethrowers. What? 
Knockers, clackers, and clip locks were large acrylic balls fun. attached to hefty string. Their simple design was also their sole amusement. It was created by knocking the two balls together as hard and fast as humanly possible. Yeah, what's possible. wrong with that? Their force got out of hand quickly with bruised eyes, broken teeth, and runaway balls that became flying projectiles into other oh, people no. and objects. Clackers, or whatever you want to call them, were banned in 1985 after numerous minor injuries and shattered toys. Agree with that one. You're saying it got banned because a couple people got hit in the yard, maybe hit in the face with it. A uh, newsflash: you can make anything into a weapon if you really try. I could be hitting my brother over the head with this iPhone, and he'll probably get a concussion too. But does that mean all iPhones as a whole are a hazard? I don't think so. The iconic splash off water rocket used water pressure buildup from your house to intensify and boost the toy rocket oh, into the fun. sky. Played with by both children and hobbyists, these rockets yeah. were well liked until they began exploding midair. The toy company had 37 cases reported of the rocket exploding under <gasps> pressure and shrapnel flying off in unpredictable directions. <laughs> that rocket made it halfway up into the air and then was like, hmm, nah, I don't want to be a rocket no more. I want to be a firework! Unpredictable directions, causing uh, skin lacerations and property ooh. damage. New technology often leads Aqua to new and dot. exciting educational toys. The downfall is in the novelty science. In 2007, the Spin Master Company out of Toronto, Canada, introduced Aquadots to the world, a creative toy that comprised of small beads that, when moistened with water, formed a chemical reaction that made them stick together. I used to love this toy! You can make anything you imagine with these Aquadots. Dinosaur, kitty cat, a piece of cheese? You name it, you could Aquadot it. Fortunately, millions of shipments were quickly recalled later that year when it was discovered that the Chinese manufacturing company used a chemical in the beads that acted as a powerful <gasps> sedative when swallowed. Guys, if you don't know what sedative means, it means something that can make you pass out and go betty bye for unknown amounts of time. Powerful sedative when swallowed. As a result, multiple children were found in a comatose state. As a result, these kids were found in a comatose state? Guys, that literally means that these kids went into a coma. I mean, geez, I understand getting excited over toys you like, but going into a coma, that's a whole different level. But anyways, guys, that's all the crazy dangerous banned toys that I have for you today. If you liked today's video, don't forget to smash that like button and hit subscribe so you can join the family. I love you guys so much. And I'll see you all in the next video.